Can Mono White draw cards? Let's find out with one of the most mediocre commanders ever printed. It's Mono White Vampires with Maverin Fane, Dusk Apostle. Welcome to the Commander's Beacon. I am Eric, and this channel is dedicated to unconventional commander decks and strategies. And today we've got Maverin Fane. It's a white vampire. It's a 2-2 that costs 3 mana, and it has whenever one or more non-token vampires you control attack, you create a 1-1 white vampire creature token with a lifelink. And if that wasn't enough, Maverin Fane also has absolutely nothing. So I hope that's enough. Now Maverin Fane wants you to play mono white vampires, of which there are only 20 available in Commander, and as you might guess, not all of them are Commander playable. And Maverin Fane rewards you by making up to a single 1-1 Vampire token on each of your turns. But we're not really here to talk too much about Maverin Fane, at least not yet. This deck is actually an experiment where I ask the question, can Mono White draw cards effectively in Commander? Of course there are commanders like Sram and Loshiel, which can definitely draw cards on their own, but they don't necessarily help out other decks too much. They don't really define the status of card draw in mono white. But we have seen a decent number of card draw options printed in white over the past couple of years, like Asper Sentinel and Mangara the Diplomat, and some of these are just general good card draw. But some of white's other card draw requires that you put creatures onto the board, specifically small creatures. Other white card draw requires you to gain life or have a high life total, like Dawn of Hope and Cosmos Elixir, though that last one is actually a colorless artifact, so any deck can play it, but since white is generally the best color at gaining life, it will usually function best in a white deck. So I pose the question, under the best of circumstances, can mono white actually draw cards effectively? And Maverin Fane is perhaps the best white commander to put this question to the test. Maverin Fane creates small creatures that enable card draw with cards like Mentor of the Meek, and since those creature tokens have lifelink, Maverin Fane also helps us with White's conditional card draw that requires life gain, like Dawn of Hope. So let's find out if Mono White can draw cards, and let's try to make the rest of the deck not suck too much while we're at it. First, let's talk about vampires. Maverin Fane is a vampire, and he likes it when your non-token vampires attack. If your vampires aren't attacking, Maverin Fane is a vanilla 2-2, and that does not impress me. So we're going to play some vampires. Now even if we refuse to put utter trash into our deck, we're still left with a few mono-white vampires that are, well, just okay. Duskborn Skymarcher, Skymarcher Aspirant, and Skyblend of the Legion are cheap vampires that generally have flying and should be able to easily attack and trigger Mavern Fane to make those vampire tokens for us. Unholy Efficient is a 1 mana 1-2 one, with Vigilance that lets you pay 5 mana to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. 5 mana. You will rarely ever activate this ability, but Unholy Efficient is definitely not the trashiest vampire out there, and it's cheap, so get in the deck. Do you like 2-2s two with a lifelink for 2? Bishop Soldier, get in the deck. Inspiring Cleric and Paladin of Atonement also gain you life. Once. On a throwaway body, but we can turn that life gain into other forms of advantage, like card draw. So you're in the deck. At the top end of your curve, Glorifier of Dusk is a 5 mana 4-4 four four that lets you pay life to give itself flying or vigilance until end of turn. Yep, this is what mono white vampires look like, and I'll say it again, it could be worse. At least, a little bit worse. Probably. Bishop of Rebirth lets you return a creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield when it attacks, so this is actually decent. Bishop of Binding is basically Banishing Light on a body. Now I don't recommend playing Banishing Light in Commander, but at least Bishop of Binding actually does something, which is more than we can say for many of the vampires in this deck. And finally, Legion's Landing helps you make more vampire tokens with lifelink, and this is actually a good card, so of course, it's in the deck. So those are most of our vampires, and we just need at least one that can attack, so Maverin Fane can do his one job and make a token for us every now and then. But you'll notice that Maverin Fane is not just a vampire, he's a vampire cleric. 
and clerics also like to gain life. So let's jam some clerics and cleric synergies into the deck. Now clerics often help us gain life, which might help us draw cards, among other things. So we'll use Relic Vile, a 3-mana artifact that lets us pay 2 and sacrifice a creature to draw a card. It also has, as long as you control a cleric, Relic Vile has whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses 1 life, and you gain 1 life. So we can do Aristocrats in Mono White, and did you see those vampires that we're playing? They'll die to a stiff wind, so Relic Vile can do work in this deck. Righteous Valkyrie is an Angel Cleric, and it has whenever another Angel or Cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to its toughness. And as long as you have at least 7 more life than your starting life total, creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2, so this is decent. We've got some Clerics that reward us for gaining life. A Serene Steward lets you pay white whenever you gain life, and if you do, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature. Voice of the Blessed is a legitimate good card. It's a 2-2 two -two that costs white white. And whenever you gain life, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. And as long as it has four or more plus one, plus one counters, it has flying and vigilance. And as long as that is ten or more, it is indestructible. Now, as far as other clerics are concerned, several of our vampires are actually clerics. Like Duskborn Sky Marcher, Inspiring Cleric, and Bishop of Rebirth. We'll also use Grand Abolisher and Mother of Runes, which aren't vampires, but they are just no-nonsense good cards. And they also happen to be clerics. And of course there's Avian Changeling and Mirror Entity. These have Changeling, so they're both Vampires and Clerics, and Salamanders, and Oozes, and Squirrels, and so on. Avian Changeling is just a 2-2 flyer for 3, which is pretty underwhelming, but it can attack readily to trigger Maverin Fane to make us tokens. Mirror Entity lets you pay X to make all of your creatures have base power and toughness XX until end of turn. And since we're making tokens, this is a pretty decent finisher. Okay, so those are our clerics. So we're playing weak creatures, making tokens, and gaining life. How are we going to turn that into a victory? Let's go over our win conditions next. Now Glorifier of Dusk won't be winning you the game on its own. It'll need some help. Lots and lots of help. First, we'll play some equipment to make our unimpressive creatures a serious threat. Now, because we're playing a tribal deck, with two tribes even, I need to mention again, Heirloom Blade. This gives the equipped creature plus three plus one, which is not bad, given that it equips for only one mana. And when that creature dies, you get to reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card that shares a creature type with it and put it into your hand. So this is pretty good insurance against board wipes or targeted removal for your equipped creature to at least help you get something back. Now I didn't build this deck on a budget because a few of White's strongest card draw effects are fairly costly, at least on your wallet if not your mana pool. So because this isn't a budget deck, we'll use several of the Swords of Turn Your Garbage Vanilla Vampires into Combat Monsters equipments. Like Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Fire and Ice, Sword of Light and Shadow, you know the deal. There's also True Conviction, which will buff our whole team with Vigilance and Double Strike. Akroma's Will is basically the Mono White Crater Hoof Behemoth. And as long as we're generating at least the occasional token with Maverin Fane, Cathar's Crusade will make our whole team pretty big. So will Archangel of Thune whenever we gain life. Speaking of which, we've got other life gain payoffs in this deck too. Cleric Class makes all of our life gain a little bit better, and if you level it up to level 2 for 3 into white, it gives you a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control uh, whenever you gain life. Heliod Sundcrown also puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control whenever you gain life. It can also give a creature lifelink until end of turn for one and a white. It can of course also combo with Walking Ballista to win you the game. And we can use Imperial Recruiter to help us find the Ballista or any of our other smaller creatures. This combo has nothing to do with Maverin Fane, but it does take advantage of all of our life gain, and as long as we're not building a budget deck, we might as well include some decently effective methods of winning the game, right? So between powerful equipment and plus one plus one counters from life gain and the Heliod walking ballista combo, we do have a few redundancies in this deck for finishing games. Now let's talk about some of the other support cards in this deck.
Well, it's finally time for us to talk about card draw. White still doesn't have a lot of card draw, but it does have some pretty powerful effects. First, let's get the generic ones out of the way. Esper Sentinel doesn't require any synergy at all, and it just draws cards whenever our opponents play magic, all for a single mana. Mangara the Diplomat draws you cards when your opponents attack you, or draw cards, which is powerful, but most of the time it's not really under your control, so I don't really think Mangara is reliable necessarily. Skull Clamp isn't white, but our deck has creatures in it, which is pretty much all your deck needs for Skull Clamp to be an all-star. So it's in. Endless Atlas is decent repeatable card draw in a monocolor deck. This 2-mana artifact lets you pay 2 and tap it to draw a card, but you can only activate this ability if you control 3 or more lands with the same name. Now for more synergistic card draw, I'm using Mentor of the Meek and Welcoming Vampire, as you might expect. Mentor of the Meek lets you pay 1 whenever a creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, and if you do, you draw a card. Perfect synergy with Maverin Fane, who's making us a token every turn, as long as we're able to attack with a non-token vampire. Welcoming Vampire is, well, first a vampire, so that's nice. It also draws you a card whenever one or more other creatures with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, and it doesn't even charge you any mana, but this ability triggers only once each turn. As mentioned, we can also turn life gain into card draw, but not with Cosmos Elixir, because it's a bad card. So instead, we'll use Dawn of Hope, which lets you pay 2 whenever you gain life, and if you do, you draw a card. You can also make 1-1 tokens with a lifelink for 3 and a white, but sadly those tokens are neither clerics nor vampires. We'll also play Well of Lost Dreams, which lets you turn your life gain into card draw as well. Now when it comes to additional life gain effects, we've mentioned several of them so far, but we're also using Blind Obedience and Authority of the Consoles, which will simultaneously slow down our opponents and gain us life, which is great. Now this deck is also highly reliant on establishing a board state, so we'll use some Graveyard Recursion to protect our investments. We've already mentioned Sword of Light and Shadow, which can return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player. Uh, we've mentioned Bishop of Rebirth. There's also Sivvin's Reclamation, which is a sorcery that lets you return a permanent with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And it has Flashback for 4 and a white. Emiria the Sky Ruin is awesome value. Uh, this land tapped for white, and it also has, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 7 or more planes, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now reanimating one of your creatures each turn for free is amazing, but it takes a lot of planes to make this work. Fortunately, we're in mono white, which as far as I'm concerned is the only kind of deck that can take advantage of Emiria most of the time. And plenty of our ramp will help us get to those planes to enable Emiria like Land Tax, Archaeomancer's Map, and Sword of the Animist. And finally, there's Dusk to Dawn. Dusk is a sorcery that destroys all creatures with power 3 or greater. We have a decent number of cheap, trashy creatures in this deck that'll dodge this board wipe. And Dawn, the aftermath side of the card, which can only be cast from your graveyard, has you return all creature cards with power 2 or less from your graveyard to your hand, which again is a majority of our creatures. And that is most of the deck. Again, I didn't mention everything here. Our removal package, for example, is pretty standard fare for Mono White. But as always, you can see the link to the full deck list in the description. Now let's go over the deck stats and cost. This Maverin Fane Dusk Apostle deck has an average mana value of 2.88. We're playing with two tribes in one deck, so we've got 16 vampires and 15 clerics. Again, the vampires are just here to let Mavern Fane actually do something productive, and we only need one of them for that effect. Not to mention, there's only 20 vampires available in Mono White. And furthermore, Mavern Fane himself can trigger his own ability if you manage to attack with him profitably. So I found that generally 16 vampires is sufficient for this deck. We also have 16 cards that gain us life or reward us for gaining life, but not counting the tokens produced by Maverin Fane. This deck has 9 card draw cards and 9 ramp cards. And finally, we have 8 pieces of single target removal and 4 board wipes. At the time of this recording, this deck has a value of $806.92.
So that is Maverin Fane, Dusk Apostle. Now Maverin Fane is admittedly not a strong commander, and Mono White is admittedly not a great color for vampires. But we do have a lot of support in the form of life gain payoffs like the Walking Ballista Heliad combo, or Archangel of Thune, or Cleric synergies like Relic Vile. So with this deck we're trying to maximize the opportunity to take advantage of Mono White's card draw by utilizing both tokens and life gain. And while a lot of this Mono White card draw is effective, or even good, like Esper Sentinel and Welcoming Vampire, many of them are still situational. So for the time being, if you're playing the right Mono White deck, you can draw cards, and if not, then you might struggle. I don't actually think that Mono White needs better card draw cards, it just needs more of them, uh, so that a greater variety of decks are supported. Again, we chose this deck because it makes small creatures and because it gains life, which enables some of the white card draw cards. And if, you're, and if your white deck doesn't have those things, then you might struggle to draw cards. But that is all I've got for today. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button, or subscribe if you haven't already. Or leave a comment, or better yet, check out our Discord where you can discuss commander deck building, or maybe play some games. And if you want to support the channel, check out our Patreon. Thanks to all of my patrons, I really appreciate your help. Uh, patrons get to vote on upcoming content and more. You can find the link to the Discord and the Patreon in the description. But thank you for watching, we'll see you next time.